chemical bond, in its simplest form, is the attraction between atoms that allows the creation of compounds. These chemical bonds are a result of a force that is called electrostatic force. This means that atoms with opposite charges will attract to each other, forming an overall more stable compound. The main types of chemical bonds are ionic bonds and covalent bonds. In all atoms, the atom becomes stable when the outermost shell is filled with electrons. So if you look at nitrogen and phosphorus, they each have five electrons in their outermost shell. For both nitrogen and phosphorus to become stable, they will need to steal three electrons from another atom to bring them to a grand total of eight electrons in their outermost shell. Sodium and aluminium, however, are in a slightly different situation. For these two elements, it is much easier for them to give away their electrons than for them to try and steal them. Because they need to try and steal so many different electrons, it is much easier for sodium to just donate or give away one electron, and for aluminium, it will need to donate three electrons to become stable. Now looking at the far right, we have two noble gases, neon and argon. Neon and argon are classified as a noble gas because their outermost shell is already filled by default. This means that neon and argon do not need to react with other elements or compounds to become stable. This is why noble gases are very hard to react. Unfortunately, not all atoms have this luxury. So if we look at sodium, it only has one electron in its outermost shell. So we ask ourselves, what is easier for sodium, to try and steal seven electrons from somewhere, or for sodium to just give away that one electron? This same thought process can be done with chlorine. So chlorine has seven electrons in its outermost shell, and it is much easier for chlorine to just simply steal one electron than to try and donate all seven. So this is where we see ionic bonding appearing. So in order to achieve stability, sodium will donate one of its electrons to chlorine so that both atoms will become stable. So remembering that electrons are negatively charged, as the sodium loses that electron, it loses that negative charge, meaning that sodium becomes more positive. Chlorine, quite inversely, because it is stealing that electron, will become more negatively charged. Now, because sodium is now positively charged because it lost that electron, and chlorine is now negatively charged because it gained that electron, they are now fundamentally attracted to each other due to one being positive and one being negative, and thus an ionic bond is formed. A covalent bond is slightly different to an ionic bond. Instead of one atom donating an electron and another atom stealing an electron, as we saw in the ionic bond, with a covalent bond, the two atoms share one electron each by exchanging it backwards and forwards between them. So by looking at methane, we can see that this carbon has four electrons in its outermost shell. So what carbon does is that it will covalently bond. That is to say, it will share electrons with the surrounding hydrogens. Hydrogen only needs two electrons in its outermost shell to become stable. So by sharing one hydrogen electron with one carbon electron, it can be seen that both of them have their outermost shells completely filled and that the overall compound is now stable.